Well, the clip we're about to show you is very mellow compared to the unspeakable crime that goes down later on in the new suspense thriller, The Ravine. We're talking about a crime so horrific that it had friends and family wishing they had paid more attention to this father's words. Take a listen. I ever wonder if uh, you end up in the right place in life? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, maybe, maybe it's just about freedom. You know, doing whatever you want, whenever you want to do it. Being tied down. I have portion. Well, he was laughing then, but this movie is deep and super intense. And lucky for us, one of the stars who is practically family to us at this point always makes time for us. And we mean always. He's an actor, a writer, a director, a producer, and New York's very own Mr. Peter Facinelli. Thank you guys for having me on again. What do you, thank you for coming on. I'm. St are you kidding? <laughs> We we are we are. I'm really sorry I can't be there in person. Give you a big hug because I love coming in there. I know we love get having you here too. But very soon we'll all be able to like you know hang and chill in studio and everything. But let's just talk about this movie where you play Danny Turner, the man at the center of it all, and and it's it's based on a book and true events. So talk to us about the mystery that unfolds here without giving too much away. Yeah, well, I think the trailer gives, uh, if you watch the trailer, you, you get a lot out of it, so I get, it's okay for me to spoil a little bit. So okay. uh, my character, Danny Turner, is best friends with Eric Dane's character, and uh, and then one day, you know, he's, he, my character's a very lovable guy, and he, you know, the life of the party all the time, and then, and then one day he just kind of snaps, and he ends up murdering his wife and his and his kid, and, and then Eric Dane's left with how did this happen? Is this the person that I thought he was? How could my best friend do something, uh, you know, that atrocious? And, and and it's really a movie that explores finding the forgiveness for something like that. And and because it was based on true events, the producers uh, who wrote, who, you know, made the movie, it was based on, uh, Eric, he was the Eric Dane character in real life. And he, he was left with all these unanswered questions. And, uh, and, and I think that making this movie was part, partly to help him heal, but partly a cautionary tale for people with you know with, with all the mental health issues that are going on right now rightfully like like take notice of of your friends and see what they might be going through because these lives could have been spared yeah had my character reached out to his friend in some way or if there were some signs or yeah. signals or you know everybody's got something going on and, and then you know you could just by having a conversation, it might it might turn things around for somebody, you know. Yeah. So watching the movie was after, cause it was after the fact when I saw the scene where you were saying, "Did you ever imagine about freedom, about yeah. leaving?" Then it made sense, cause he's saying certain things and acting certain ways. Yeah. But you it, you just think it's he's just talking. But after the it's fact, you're like, there yeah. you go. Anyway, there's thank a you. moment there where he could have probed a little bit more. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, maybe my character was reaching out in, in some subtle way and, and they just didn't. But that conversation could have led to a bigger conversation, yeah. which maybe could have saved some lives that day. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it has a lot of... I remember talking to somebody once and they said, you know, a sign of a good movie is when you finish the movie, the first question shouldn't be, where do we park the car? <laughs> and I can promise you after this movie, you're not going to be like, where do we park the car? You know, like you're going it, to, it's very thought provoking. Yeah, it, it really is. And it has everything. It's a psychological thriller. It's like a faith based movie because, you know, Leslie Uggams plays like, I think like an angel on earth type of situation. And you mentioned you know every, what? what? Leslie Uggams is an angel on earth. Right. I tell you that right now. She's, I mean, she's such a beautiful soul. Yeah. Like, you know, she's, she's, you got a little bit of that in you too, where you, when you connect with somebody, you look in their eyes and they just have this beautiful light in their eyes and they're just so warm and kind oh and God. friendly. I, listen, you have that too. Oh, I do. If Peter Facinelli says it, it is true. Thank you, Peter Facinelli. But this movie has not just Leslie Uggams, it has like Eric Dane, Terry Polo, and Kyle Lauder, who was here not that long ago to talk about his other movies. So it's kind of like everyone's in it. And last time you were here, you were playing a weatherman in 13 yeah. minutes. That's like yeah. your range because you go from playing the weatherman to like this troubled person. It's like just so crazy, which which also brings me to this picture because you're also most recently in Roar. Oh, yes. I yes. know. I so um, I didn't want to get in trouble with the FCC. So I kind of like, <laughs> I, this is all I was like, I'm going to show. 
<laughs> Wait a second. You can show more than that. I could have, but I don't know. <laughs> well, if you want to see more, you'll have to tune into the ravine. To see, I mean, not the ravine, the roar. Roar. Watch roar on Apple TV. Roar on Apple TV, you'll see a little bit more than that. <laughs> or I'll go to your Instagram page. You go to my Instagram page, too. <laughs> but Peter Facinelli, you're so busy because I was looking at your IMDb page. I was like, oh, my God. You have so much, like, 80, I, I was like, I stopped counting because I, I, can, I can't count past 11 because I have 11 fingers. I was born with 11 fingers. <laughs> but I can't count past 11. I was like, oh, my, you, that's, a good, that's a good thing. Yeah, well, that means I get to come and hang out with you guys and pick some more, and, and I get to, uh, you know, promote more movies. So. I, also, is your sister still at Pfizer? Can I go yes. hang out with her? Yes. Can you tell her yeah. about me so when I go there, they don't call security as usual? I will. I think they're giving out COVID vaccines right, right down in the lobby. So. Oh, my God. I thought, you know what? I, I thought about this. There was a time I had to wait for my turn for the COVID vaccine. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, where's Peter Facinelli when you need him? I could just, like, tell him to tell his sister to come downstairs with a shot, and I'll be fine. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. anyway, I'm glad you're doing great. How's, how's the family? How are the girls? Everyone they're good? Really great. All the girls are good. It's sunny here in L.A., and, uh, and I'm glad things are opening up more. I, I just finished a movie in England. Oh. And that was uh, really, really nice to be able to get on a plane again and travel a little bit. So uh, it feels like we're slowly but surely, you know, coming out of this. Hopefully it doesn't take a turn. All right, Dr. Colin. I mean, sorry. I had to say <laughs> Dr. Colin. I'm, I'm serious. You look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, aging backwards. So I was like, the, when I see someone and I'm like, oh, my God, he looks great. They look great. What, like, what do you, like, what's your regimen? Or I should, better yet, judge, after that picture I showed from Roar, do you do any specific ab workouts? Because when people see the picture, they know what I mean. Or is it? Is I, mean, it... I, just, I just had a bowl of chocolate Krispies uh, cereal, so. <laughs> but I do, I do exercise. I, I mean, I, I, that's that's. Must um, be nice. You have to exercise too. Must I mean, be nice, Peter Peter Facinelli. If I had a like a bowl of Krispies, I'd be burping, and you, you'd be like, "Oh, gee, when's when are you due?" Because I'd be bloated and stuff. Everything I eat makes me bloated. Anyway. <laughs> I, I, I will look forward to seeing you for your next project because I know you never forget us. You're always here. You've been a Pix fan since you oh. were, like, a young man. I was Queens. 11. See, I worked that in, 11 uh, Pix. Ah, uh, see? You've been a Pix fan since, uh, since forever. And for you, I told you we're going to bring back the Pix, Pix, Pix game. Yes. A lot of people don't know what we're talking about. Do, you, do, you, do they know? Do you have to do, like, a flash of that OG, the OG game we of uh, back then. Yeah, a lot of people from back then, like Kevin Smith was on this morning. He was like, oh, my God, he was obsessed with it, too. Like, a lot of viewers that are, like, our age know what it is. But we have to introduce it to this new generation. It was basically a game where they had this, uh, it was like an Atari game where mm -hmm. these things were floating in space, and you had to, like, shout into the phone, picks, 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 picks. And it would, like, you, you could win, you know, the, the little video game. Oh, so we'll bring it back for you. Only for you, Peter Facinelli, only for you. But for uh -huh. now... We're going to check you out in the ravine. It's out now on demand and in select theaters. Peter Facinelli, always a pleasure to see you. You guys can check him out on Roar as well. It's on Apple TV+. Plus. Nicole Kidman stars in it. She executive produces, produced it. And it has, like, an amazing group of women at the, fr at the front and center of this. So thank you, Peter Facinelli. Thank you guys for having me on. See you Bye. soon.